Welcome to the IT Free Training video on installing Windows 8 from the network. If you want a quick solution for installing Windows 8 over the network without the need to take media to the PC, this video is for you. If you want to understand all the details involved in the process, see our other much longer video. This video is designed to get you going with the minimum amount of time and work, so without wasting any more time, I will change to my Windows 8 computer and start configuring it to perform completely network based installs of Windows 8 over the network. In order to install Windows 8 over the network, I need TFTP and DHCP. TFTP allows files to be transferred to the client required for the install, and DHCP allows the client to be configured for network booting. TFTP and DHCP do not come with Windows 8. So I will open Internet Explorer and perform a Google search for TFTP D32. This is free software that provides both of these services. It is the first link shown in Internet Explorer. If you have trouble finding it, I have placed a link for it in the description in the video. Once the page is loaded, I will select the download link and then scroll down to the bottom and select the link for TFTP D64 Standard Edition Installer. Once I run the installer, I will accept the license on the license screen, and then on the components screen, select the option Start TFTP 64 so I can configure it as soon as the install is complete. On the next screen, I will accept the default install path and start the install. Once the install is completed and TFTPD has started, I will receive a message from the Windows firewall asking to allow the software through the firewall. I will press Allow Access and Allow TFTPD through the firewall. The next step that I need to do is configure TFTPD. To do this, I will press the Settings button. On the Global tab, the only two services that I require are TFTP and DHCP so I will deselect the rest. I will next select the TFTP tab. At the top, I need to configure a directory to store the TFTP files in. I will create a directory on the C drive called TFTP and configure this as the base directory. On the TFTP tab, I will tick the option PXE Compatibility. Your network card may be supported without this option being enabled, but ticking this improves the compatibility of networking booting. On the DHCP tab, I will configure a starting IP address and 50 addresses in the pool. For the boot file, I will enter in PXE Linux.0. In a moment, I will download this file and the other files required and place them in the TFTP directory. Next, I will configure DNS, router, and subnet mask for this network. These values may be different on your network. Once all the settings are configured, I will untick the option Ping Address Before Assignation. This option will ping the IP address before it is allocated with DHCP. Pings are blocked by the Windows firewall by default and thus will prevent any IP addresses from being allocated by DHCP unless you make changes to the Windows firewall. I will press OK and save the changes. The files required for TFTP have been made available on the IT Free Training website. This saves you having to configure these yourself. A link for the download is available in the description of this video. Once the download is finished and I have opened it, I will copy the files to the TFTP directory in the C drive. The next step I need to do is to create ISOs of Windows PE. In order to do this, I will go back to Internet Explorer and search for Windows ADK. The first link is Windows Assessment and Deployment Kit, which will be used to create Windows PE ISOs. I will open this link and select the option on the web page to download. Once the software has downloaded, I can run it to start the install. Once the install has started, on the first screen I will accept the default location for the install files. On the next screen, 
I will accept the default option of No for the Customer Experience Improvement Program and move on. On the next screen, I need to select which components to download and install. The only component that I need is Windows Pre-Installation Environment, Windows PE, which will also include the component deployment tools. Once I press Install and accept the security prompts, the components will be downloaded and installed. The download is 6 gigabytes in size, so I will pause the video and return once it is complete. Now that the install is complete, I can close some of these windows. The next step is to create the Windows PE ISOs. I will do this by pressing the Start key and then selecting the icon Deployment and Imaging Tools. This will open a command prompt with additional variables configured that will allow me to run the following commands. If you open a normal command prompt, these commands will not work. The first command that I will run is Copy PE. This will copy the files required by Windows PE. The first parameter is the architecture, in this case x86 for 32 bits, followed by the directory that I want to copy the files to. The command does not take too long to complete. Once complete, I will run the copy PE command again, but this time I will use the AMD64 parameter to create a 64-bit version of Windows PE. Once the command is completed, the Windows PE files are on the hard disk. However, they need to be put into an ISO image. I will run the command make win PE media. The parameter for this command is slash ISO followed by the location of the files and the destination file. In this case, I will create the ISO in the TFTP directory. Once the command is completed, I will run it again for the 64-bit version of Windows PE. Now in the TFTP directory, there will be two copies of Windows PE, one for 32-bit and the second for 64-bit. The last bit of configuration that I need to perform is to share out the install files on the network. I have the DVD of Windows 8 in the DVD drive, so I will open Windows Explorer and navigate to the DVD right-click it and select Properties. Next, I will select the Sharing tab and then press the button Advanced Sharing. In Advanced Sharing, I will take the option Share this folder. The default permissions gives everyone read access, so I will accept these and exit out of the properties. Windows 8 is now configured with TFTP and DHCP and the Windows 8 files have been shared on the network. I will now change to another computer that has no operating system installed as yet and start it up. On this particular computer, if I press F12, this will trigger a network boot. When I press F12, the computer will obtain an IP address from the network, download some files, and display a menu. On this menu, I will select the second option, which will load Windows PE 64-bit. Windows PE will be downloaded from the network and be stored in memory. It takes a minute or so to download, so I've sped up the video so we do not have to wait. Once Windows PE has loaded, a command prompt will appear and WPE init will be run. Windows PE will attempt to initialize the networking and in the process, will attempt to obtain an IP address from a DHCP server on the network. Once the command is finished, I will run the net use command to map a drive to the install DVD media that I shared previously. Once this has been mapped, I can then run the setup from the network share. After this, the install of Windows 8 is the same as if you had taken the DVD and put it in the computer and installed it. That's it. Windows 8 can now be installed from the network without the need for any physical media to be taken to the computer. If you are interested in a more in-depth video of how the Windows 8 install works and how installing over the network works, see our other video on installing Windows 8. This video is just designed to quickly get your Windows 8 install up and running across the network and does not go into too much detail about how it works. If you are interested, 
Please see that video and the other videos that we have available for free on many IT related topics. Thanks for watching and see you next time.